Hi everyone, welcome to People Track. How are you doing, everybody? Um, I am sharing my screen right now. Just give me a second. Hi, my name is Asuka Masuka from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, it is such an honor to be here. I am so excited since this is my first presentation at Type 3D Printing. Today, I would like to share about Japanese government efforts on women's social advancement. This is a topic I would like to share at this conference because it is um, important to be aware of the social issues we might have in common. And by focusing on situation in Japan, I would like you to be more familiar with our social problems since some of you will have, or you might have had uh, chances to work with Japanese companies or uh, people who have Japanese background. I would like to hear your opinions as well. This is a recording session and we can take questions at this moment, but please feel free to contact me at LinkedIn. So let's begin. Here is today's agenda. First, starting with my introduction. Secondly, I will share the efforts and results that Japanese government has made so far on women's social advancement. Obviously, it's not completed yet. We, have, we believe that there are more actions to take. So third, uh, I'm talking about what kind of efforts we should make from now on. Then I will share a little bit about women in 3D printing and women in 3D printing talk a chapter because I am an ambassador. So uh, again, my name is Asuka Masoka from Japan. I am working for Marubeni Information Systems since 2014. I am sales of Stratasys, desktop metal and make about 3D printers. Since 2018, I have stayed in the States to do some research and business development in Silicon Valley branch. After coming back to Japan in 2019, I'll work as a sales for 3D printers and this OT security solutions. I started Women in 3D Printing Tokyo chapter after I came back to Japan. My first Women in 3D Printing event as, a, as an attendee was in Silicon Valley. After I attended some events there, I thought about starting a chapter in Tokyo because I learned the importance of connecting. Let me talk about my hobbies a little bit. I love to do some exercises. I have been into Zimba for seven years. And every day I start my day with yoga session on Zoom. This picture is taken while I hiked the Mount Takao in Tokyo. I know many of you see Tokyo as um, concrete jungle. It is, but Tokyo has mountains too. This cool mountain has nice scenery and many energy supplies on the way to the top, like ramen, dumplings, or even beer. If you haven't visited Tokyo yet, let it be one of the places to visit when the pandemic is over. Okay, let's go to the main point. Firstly, I will share some of the facts to give you um, some ideas how we are doing right now uh, on women's social advancement. This is the result of glass ceiling index by the British magazine, The Economist. This is an index that expresses how women are treated more equally in the workplace compared to men in 29 developed countries that are also OECD member countries. 100 point would mean the country has great environment for working uh, women's women. As you see in this graph, 
Um, actually, Japan continues to be the one of the lowest when it comes to glass ceiling index. The country which has the best index is Iceland here with over 80 points. The United States here is 22nd place. In addition, the gender gap index, which was published last year, Japan didn't do a great job either. Uh, Japan marked 121 in 153 countries. I am just checking if we are on the same page. Uh, why is women's social advancement important? Creating a society where women and uh, women can play an um, active role is very important, not only for our QOL, like these, uh, but also for the development of the society and economy in the future. In Japan, especially, it is essential for these two issues we have had for a long time. Decreasing labor force and falling childbirth. Some statistics says that Japan's workforce will be 20% smaller in 20 years from now, just in 20 years. Uh, for the childbirth number, uh, it had been 20.7 million in the baby boom, but in 2019, we had only 84.7 thousand new babies. So uh, 17 years ago, June 2003, uh, the government had set a goal of women will account for at least 30% of leadership positions by 2020. This is uh, one of the first policy that was focused on women's social advancement. The government took this goal influenced by the Western countries. In the States, the glass ceiling started to be an important issue in early 90s. So uh, Abe government, the Prime Minister Abe, um, which was 2012 to 2020, has announced his vision for women's social advancement um, to work on the Japan's main issues that I mentioned. He continued to aim the goal 30% women in management by 2020. In Prime Minister Abe government, this act, act on um, the promotion of female participation and career advancement in the workplace was enforced in 2016. Its subjects are government agencies, local government, and corporations with more than 101 employees. So this, um, under this act, the companies are obligated to first collect and analyze the data on issues on gender and employment. For example, uh, the data of rates of female employees uh, newly hired, the data of working hours, or rates of female managers. And second, they are obligated to devise the disclosed action plans to improve gender e equality, uh, equality with concrete objectives and measures based on this analysis analysis. Um, third, they are obligated to announce the data regarding women's participation and advancement. There is a system that certifies the companies that are excellent in their efforts. Uh, the certified companies can expect the improvement of corporate image, um, but also government gives subsidy. You can use this certification mark in an advertisement, this pink one on the right, 
um, and the companies can expect an advantage in recruiting too. So I will say this was one of the main effort that Abe government made. Let's see how it went on the next slide. So here's the graph. Uh, the pink bars show the rate of women's, uh, women in the workforce, and the green ones show the rate of women in management. As of 2020, uh, the employment rate of women in Japan is 44.5%, which is not significantly low compared to other countries. On the other hand, uh, the green bar, women in management are really low compared to other countries. We had only 14.8% of women who are in management in 2020. It means we could not we couldn't meet the goal of 30% by 2020. So actually the goal was reset last year. Now the goal is women will account for at least 30% of management uh, positions at the earliest stage of 2020s. However, um, this number uh, this result, it's slowly getting better since in 20, uh, since the year 2004. Uh, the rate in 2004, the rate was less than 6%. In 2013, uh, it was 13.4%. 13, 13 then in 2020, it was 14.8% here. Really slowly, but uh, taking a look at this progress of over a decade, we will say it is getting better. I believe it was good that the government has announced a concrete number like 3% women in management. Because um, it allows the Japanese enterprises to have the goal and to start the effort too. In Japan, um, some of you might know about this. Um, we can't deny that there has been deep-rooted gender-based stereotypes. Before the year 2000, uh, there were no significant policies for improving women's work environment. So I believe though Abe government didn't make a huge progress on this, um, it made people start their efforts. But obviously there are still issues regarding of women's social advancement. Um, please let me talk about the measure two. Uh, first, here is the first one. Uh, the employment rate decreases during childbirth and healthcare. Please look at this graph. The vertical axis shows the labor force participation rate of women in Japan. The horizontal axis shows the age 15 and older. The employment rate here, uh, which is women in 20s to 30s, will decrease. Therefore, the graph looks like the letter M. This represents the way Japanese women uh, participate the society among their life events. Generally speaking, Japanese women leave uh, employment after either getting married or having children uh, when they reach mid 20s to 30s. So that makes the valley then return to the workforce. Uh, you can see on the on the second peak uh, of the graph, uh, and then once they finish raising their children after uh, or after their children reach a certain age, uh, and they get ready to go back to work, then the employment rate starts to increase again on the second peak. 
I've learned that this is so different from the results of the states, Norway, Sweden, and so on. In those countries, the results look like uh, inverted U shape. So um, it is said that this is because of deep rooted gender uh, role stereotype and um, lack of policies and good conditions that enable women to stay in workforce without concern uh, when they wish to work. Talking about the concerns, uh, one big thing is poor access to daycare facilities. In Japan, it is very, very difficult to find daycare. That is one of the reasons why so many women leave the employment once they become mothers. I don't know much about the situation in other countries, but you may be surprised to hear that about 12,000 children are on waiting list for daycare facilities in Japan. Meanwhile, a lot of mothers can go back to the work for, workforce. This is an important issue. Um, so we need more effective um, action on this too. So another issue about the work in Japanese women is the high rate of non-regular employees. Non-regular employees includes part-time and temporary workers. The rate of non-regular female employee is 56% in Japan. Why this is an issue? This can result in insufficient women's working environment. Um, in Japan, being a regular full-time employee means you have got the job until um, you are about 60 years old. They are a lot of, there are a lot of people who change jobs these days, but in general, we have lifetime um, employment system as long as you are regular employee. On the other hand, being a non-regular employee means you can get fired more easily when they uh, when the business are slow. There is high chance it comes with lower wage and uncovered insurance. Um, travel industry, restaurants, those are sectors that traditionally uh, hire more women than men in Japan. As you know, sadly, uh, those industries are affected by COVID. So COVID is making hard games even harder. In the M-shaped curve, uh, many of the, the women in the second peak are part-time or temporary employees because most of the time it is difficult to get hired as a regular employee as they get older. By the way, in Japan, you can, um, you can indicate uh, the preferable age and gender when you recruit people. Like, we would like to have 20 to 30 year old men for this position. This is common in Japan. So I learned this is illegal when I was in the States. So um, those are, Japan is really different. So we have seen the issues. I have covered two of them which are M-shaped curve, the decreasing employment rate during ch childbirth and childcare. And the other one is women's high rate of non-regular employment. Now, the prime minister has changed to Suga last year, after seven years and eight months of Abe, Abe government. As I said before, Abe government didn't make a huge progress, but it made enterprises start their efforts on women's social advancement. In order to keep the efforts going and work on those issues I just mentioned, uh, obviously we need more effective policies on women's social advancement under this new Suga government. 
The new Prime Minister Suga says he will stay the course on Abe's policy. However, he hasn't announced any concrete vision on women's social advancement yet. He appointed uh, only two women in 20 member cabinet, which is kind of a shame. I, we accept, 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 accept him to suggest some solid women friendly policies like policies that enable women to stay in workforce uh, when they wish to stay without concerns. As I talked before, um, especially the daycare issue needs much stronger attention than the previous government because it's not um, getting better. Also, in order to create a better work environment for mothers, it should be also important to create a better environment for men by making it easier for them to participate in childcare, like policies that uh, encourage uh, more companies to allow more men to take paternity leave uh, so that they can take some housework and childcare responsibilities more. For instance, Sekisui House, this is a Japanese well-known enterprise and they are encouraging male employees to take a month of paternity leave uh, after the birth of a new child. This enables the couple, uh, this enables the couple uh, to cooperate in childcare. I am expecting more women and men feel more supported uh, by government during childcare. To make this happen, I would like to add one more point. Uh, it is uh, important to have enough women in the decision making, uh, policy decision making process in the diet. Right now, we only have 9.9% .9 uh, women in the House of Representatives and only 22.9% women's, women's in the House of Councillors. With enough women, it would be easier for us to have effective women-friendly policies. So, um, as I mentioned, in the beginning, creating a society where women can play an active role is an important issue for Japan's future. Although we are in a, a kind of severe situation, I want to stay hopeful that we can make progress on women's social advancement in Japan uh, by raising gender awareness slowly but steadily. Lastly, I will share a little bit about Women in 3D Printing and Women in 3D Printing Tokyo chapter. As you know, uh, we are promoting, supporting, and inspiring women uh, using additive manufacturing technologies. Um, here's what we do. I think most of you know about women in 3D printing very well. Um, we feature we feature female leaders' uh, stories on email newsletters uh, and SNS. Secondly, we hold networking events to facilitate connection. Uh, events like lectures, panel discussions, office tour uh, to provide attendees with the chances of new connection and new ideas. Lastly, we work on diverse and inclusive industry. We provide tools from female speaker database, um, hiring platform, industry surveys, annual reports, and this uh, global conference. I believe these actions matter to women empowering and women in 3D printing can contribute 
contribute to women's social advancement in some way. We have 76 chapters, I believe, uh, all over the world. I am hosting Tokyo chapter events. <coughs> Excuse me. I started this um, Tokyo chapter in 2019 after I came back from the States. We've had uh, six events so far. The first two were in-person event and the rest events are virtual. Uh, we have 40 to 50 members so far, and I would like to expand this community more. And uh, you can check our movement from here on Instagram, Slack channel, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. So that's it. Um, thank you for listening. I am happy that I could share this with you. I hope you had fun, um, enjoyed it. Uh, please contact me um, on LinkedIn if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, please share it with me. And thank you so much again. And uh, stay safe and have a good rest of the conference. Thank you so much.